so there are some basic questions and uh, how, how we verify the connectivity of the underlying dynamic system. And uh, can we guarantee the synchronization of the dynamic system by using conditions imposed on the model parameters only? That means imposed on the speed and the interaction radius or even the initial conditions. That's a desirable one, not on the trajectory. Okay, now let's have some uh, uh, results about synchronization. So we will introduce a framework. N actually, not introduced by us. It's uh, originally used in the Wixx pa paper. The initial position and the heading are, uh, of all audience are mutually independent with positions. That's the initial, I mean initial position, the initial graph. Uh, 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 ID in the unit square and the heading ID in, in this, this interval. And here is an example showing that uh, in some cases, even you, you have oh, oh, okay. even you have a connectivity, so there is, there, there is no guarantee that you will, uh, you will have a synchronization. <coughs> So uh, now, uh, having introduced uh, the random framework, let's have a look at the random geometric graph. The random geometric graph is defined like this. Uh, this is a geometric distance, OK? Uh, uh, so this is a, a geometric graph is defined like this. The vertices are 1 to n, 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 n vertices, and the edge set like this. Random geometric graph is simply xi, uh, xi or i, the random, ve uh, random uh, vectors, or random variables. So uh, here is a basic result concerning uh, the connectivity what are, uh, of a random geometric graph. I, I would uh, state it again. and. Uh, G, the graph, uh, the random geometric graph uh, is denoted by G, N, R, N. N is the population size, okay? Uh, R, N is the interaction radius, okay? Uh, so each, each agent is, uh, uh, has some interactions uh, with his neighbors. Neighbors defined here like a circle uh, described by uh, its a radius, it's a R, N. So it depends on the population size. So um, uh, here is a base, uh, you have a basic results. E, this number, uh, uh, the random graph uh, with, uh, with uh, radius defined like this is connected with probability one as 10 and 10 to infinity, if and only if this number tends to uh, infinity. Whatever how small it is, I mean this, uh, the convergence rate, how slow it is. This is a necessary and a sufficient condition. Uh, so, the, but this is a result only for the uh, static graph. As, as, as I see, the initial condition for, for our dynamical system only correspond to the initial, initial condition, initial uh, stage. So when the system move, okay, then all the independency and the RID properties will, uh, will, 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 will be destroyed. So uh, that's, a, that's a problem for our study for dynamical system. Okay, now let's have another, uh, have a look at another results on uh, uh, topology, top, uh, topologic uh, distance. So we call it the, the, the graph is a M nearest neighbor graph. The connectivity, I mean, uh, each agent is connected, uh, connected with M neighbors. Defined by, defined by the number m, not by the distance, okay? So this random graph uh, is connected, uh, m, m, m is a population size, uh, so nearest neighbors. Here is another theorem, it's uh, also very interesting. For this random graph uh, to be asymptotically connected, uh, the, the number, the, the neighbors uh, to be connected is like has such an order, uh, log n. So uh, this is necessary and sufficient. Uh, quite interesting uh, result. 
uh, again, this is a full static graph, only applicable to our initial conditions, okay, for the system. <coughs> because the, uh, you, the, you, 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 need, you, uh, you need all the, uh, all the agents to be RID independently, identically distributed. <coughs> okay, anyway, that's a very u useful result uh, for our study. So let us uh, have a close look at what our uh, difficulties. Uh, some, uh, here is uh, some key points in our analysis. So the first one, how to deal with the changing, the changes, <laughs> sorry, how to deal with the changes of the neighbor graph. When the graph changes according to our uh, dynamical system, so all the properties will be lost. Independency, identically distributed property. So, so you cannot be uh, used. So that's our first problem, first difficulty. Then how to estimate the rate of synchronization? Uh, and how to deal with the matrices with increasing dimension because we are considering a, a large, large population case. How to deal with the inherent nonlinearity? We have to face it with this. And uh, <coughs> so it's, it's a too technical. I, I, I would, uh, I will skip this and just mention a few points. I will certainly not go into the details of the derivation. That's boring. Uh, so as an analysis of a geometric graph with changing neighbors, essentially this is a stability analysis of a time-varying system. So we need to estimate the number of agents in a ring. So this is technically, this is technically used in our analysis. So you have three, uh, three, three rings analyzed uh, uh, how many agents will go into this one and uh, how many agents uh, will go outside of this one uh, in, in the process uh, of the dynamical change. So this uh, uh, first one. Another point is the rate of synchronization. We need to estimate something. I, I think this is uh, familiar. We can, you, can, you, you can define the adjacent matrices like this. Uh, if I is connected is J, then we put one there. Is, uh, if not connected, then uh, put zero. Then you form an adjacent, adjacency matrix. You can, then you can have a degree, and degree matrix Laplacian, lap, normalized Laplacian, and the spectra. The first one is equal zero, and one uh, lambda and minus one. The spectral gap defined by this. And then you, you uh, also have uh, this mathematical expression for the uh, smallest non-zero, uh, possibly non-zero uh, eigenvalue, and the largest eigenvalue like this. That's very useful formula for an analysis. So I will not go into details uh, how to uh, use this to you know, analysis. So uh, we have to analyze the upper bound. We need to uh, upper bound of the initial graph. Uh, here is a I think there are quite interesting uh, results from graph theory. Let let edges of all tri tri triangulars be extracted from a complete graph. Then there exists an algorithm such that the number of residual edges at each context is no no more than three. That means for a complete complete graph can be decomposed uh, like this. This result will be used in our proof uh, for the upper bound uh, for the uh, largest eigenvalue for normalized Laplacian uh, uh, like this. You can use this geometric property to prove uh, this uh, upper bound. So again, I will not go into details. Okay, so we need also estimate the lower bound uh, for the uh, eigenvalue lambda one. Another, another uh, uh, lemma that uh, says that for an undirected graph, G suppose that there exists a path set P joining all pairs of vertices such that each path in P has a length at most L, and each edge of G is contained in at most M passes in P, then you, you have this, uh, this, this estimation. By using this, you can then get a lower bound for this. Combining uh, these two, you can you you can you, you can have such uh, uh, estimation for the gap spectral gap. 
So you need also to deal with uh, increasing dimension, uh, analysis matrices with incre increased dimension. That here is a quite detailed. We need uh, some, some kind of uh, estimation of multi-array martingales. Uh, so you have uh, some more indices, not only just the J, J plus one here, some, some more indices. You need to uh, estimate the upper bound for so dealing with increasing dimension. And uh, uh, so that's uh, uh, quite complicated, but quite elegant, I would say. This is uh, almost uh, the best upper bound. Uh, okay, you you need also to deal with nonlinearity, so I will not go into details. So, after all the work, we arrive at uh, uh, um, uh, a theorem. This theorem says, uh, on the stochastic framework, for any given model parameter, that's a speed and the interaction radius, the flock will synchronize almost surely when the number of edges is large. Quite simple. Uh, this is the first result. The high density imply, really implies synchronization. However, if you uh, think about this kind of problem in more detail, you will uh, find that intuitively, when the number of agents increases, uh, the, the interaction radius can be allowed to decrease with the number of agents. So, I mean, the natural question is, uh, does the moving, uh, so does the uh, uh, moving speed can be, can, be, can be slowed down? So under such a situation, what conditions are needed for synchronization? So this means when you have a high density, the interaction uh, distance uh, radius can be can be accordingly uh, decreased. So this theorem says if the neighborhood radius and the speed, uh, moving speed, satisfy the following uh, condition. And that's the, 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 the interaction radius is not too small and the speed is not too fast. Then for large population, the flock will again synchronize almost surely. Sorry. I have one question. Uh, in my memory, in, in, in Big Shack's model, yes. uh, you identify the, the size of the square. So he's actually making his agents um, move on a torus on the surface. Uh, yes, yes, that, that's the difference. Yeah. You, if you make this, that's, that's a torus, then they automatically have such, such things. Exactly. You can prove that. Are you doing the same? No. Uh, no, 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 no. No, so no. no. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, uh, that's a, how to say, uh, enforce them to, yeah, to, to sure. be connected in some sense. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's a different uh, situation. Uh, here, we don't have a such a constraints. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, the third result is that uh, we try to understand the smallest possible interaction radius for synchronization. Um, in practice, the interaction radius often embodies restriction on resource, such as sensing radius, or uh, sensing radius of sensors, interaction strength between particles. And intuitively, the larger the radius, the easier the system reaches synchronization. And uh, we are interested in to reach uh, the problem, like uh, to reach synchronization, how small can the radius be? Okay, here is a very new result, just published this year, uh, same general control and optimization. Uh, this result says that, suppose that uh, A agents are initially, I mean, the initially uh, are ID in the square. And, uh, and that's the radius satisfies, this uh, radius. Okay, this uh, pair, uh, this uh, population size satisfies this equation, and the speed satisfies the equation, then the flock will synchronize with high probability for all initial headings in the sufficiently large n. We have another result that says that if, we, if this is slightly relaxed like this, okay, if you put a three log log n here, if you let it tend minus infinity, uh, if you slightly relax this condition in this sense, then with high probability, there exists some initial heading such that the system cannot reach synchronization for any speed. Almost, uh, almost uh, uh, necessarily uh, sufficient. 
So as I mentioned, the probability, uh, in probability sense, the smallest possible interaction radius for synchronization is almost, I mean, sorry, not, I didn't say the same, but almost the same as a critical connected radius or for the initial the static uh, neighbor graph. This result cannot be further uh, in, improved in some sense, since a critical connected radius for static graph is, a, is, a, is such kind of uh, order. So the next result uh, uh, concerning with uh, another kind of uh, uh, neighbors, uh, the synchronization of uh, flocks with a topological distance. So experiments really show that in some bio biological systems, the agents interact with a fixed number of neighbors, as I mentioned before. And so not a geometric uh, neighbor. So for flocks where each agent interacts with m nearest neighbor, we estimate the rate for the synchronization probably sufficient condition. So here is a two, 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 two results. Uh, I, I, I would still say the elementary results, I'm not, uh, not that uh, uh, deep. The first result says that if the number of agents neighbor m n is proportional to the population size, then for any speed, the system will synchronize almost surely, provided n is large enough. This theorem says if uh, m n, the, 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 the number of uh, neighbors to be connected uh, connected by uh, the agent, uh, is, uh, the order of m n is uh, higher than log n, then if the moving speed is, uh, is sufficiently small, then the system will reach synchronization for large n. So that means uh, approximately uh, log n, uh, uh, the number log n is uh, almost uh, sufficient, almost, I would say. So uh, if you connect with log n numbers. Okay, now let's have a look at uh, the in, in, intervention. 